things that make 2KW Pro the heart of New York City. 2KW Pro, your company, your wrestling. This is Jim the Anvil Nighter, and you're listening to Damage Radio 365. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Well, welcome back after that brief hiatus, um, you know, Damage 365 and our sponsor. So as I mentioned prior to the break, we're going to look at, um, you know, the Baseball Hall of Fame. Of course, the voting uh, results were announced recently. There will be three new members of the Baseball Hall of Fame. Uh, congratulations to Jeff Bagwell. Ivan Rodriguez, and on his last opportunity on the ballot, Tim Rock Rains finally was inducted into the Hall of Fame. Three new members, um, you know, all pretty deserving, I must say. Um, you know, a little surprised that Pudge got on on the first ballot. Um, you know, there was always, you know, the slight rumor, uh, you know, that maybe he's was using PEDs. And, you know, the same thing really was going on with Mike Piazza. Uh, you know, they actually, um, the rumor was that he had back knee. And, you know, people, some people assumed that meant he was using PEDs. I uh, believe he didn't get on into the Hall of Fame until his third try. Uh, but, you know, you look at Pudge Rodriguez's numbers, uh, the massive amount of gold gloves he won. Uh, you know, it's no doubt that he played like a Hall of Famer. Uh, you know, Bagwell was one of the elite first basemen, and Rock Reigns, Tim Reigns, um, you know, seen by some as the second best leadoff hitter in Major League history, only behind Ricky Henderson. Uh, you know, so a very good class. Uh, coming in, uh, you know, congratulations to the three of them, three newest members of Major League Baseball's Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York. Um, you know, what I want to do today, though, is take a look at some of the guys who will be on the ballot for the first time next year. Um, you know, do some of these guys deserve to be in the Hall of Fame? I'm going to talk about mm, about seven of them. And, you know, they're the seven guys who I believe would have the greatest likelihood of getting in. I mean, there's other guys who are going to be on the ballot for the first time. Uh, apologies to guys like Carlos Sambrano and Carlos Lee. Uh, you know, there's a few others. Definitely have had very good, solid careers, but, you know, probably would have a tough time lasting more than one ballot. I believe if you get uh, 5% or less of the vote, uh, you are taken off the ballot. Of course, you need 75% to be elected. Uh, you know, so I'm going to talk about seven guys, and I'm going to start, um, you know, by least likely um, to most likely to get in. I believe two of these guys are sure fire Hall of Famers. Um, these other guys, definitely questionable. Um, you know, one or two of them may get in eventually. Um, but, you know, hard to tell. Um, you know, let's start off with um, Johnny Damon. Uh, Johnny Damon, longtime Red Sox, Yankee, started his career with the Royals. He played 18 seasons, had 2,769 career hits, 54th all-time, 1,668 career runs, 32nd all-time, 1,139 RBIs. 235 home runs, uh, his 522 doubles are 48th all-time, his 408 stolen bases are 67th all-time, uh, he has career slashes of a 284 batting average, 352 on base percentage, and 453 slugging. Um, reasons why I think it'll be hard for him to get in, yes, he's won um, a couple World Series, but um, in his 18 seasons, he was only named to the All-Star team twice in 2002 and 2003. He's also never finished higher than 13th in MVP voting, um, you know, for a guy to never be considered top 10 in his league. Um, you know, it's going to be kind of hard to consider that player a Hall of Famer. Uh, you know, he did lead the AL in triples once, steals once, once. Once in runs, uh, 10 times had at least 100 runs, uh, including 9 consecutive seasons. 3 times had at least 20 homers, 4 times at least 30 steals, and 5 times batted at least 300. Uh, you know, it's definitely a very strong, solid career for Johnny Damon, but again, 
Uh, you know, the two-time All-Star, never higher than 13th in MVP voting. Leads me to believe it's going to be hard for him to get in. Next is a guy who, uh, you know, is seen as the best starting pitcher in baseball by many. Uh, you know, for a decent amount of time. Problem is, um, you know, the longevity just wasn't there. And that's Johan Santana. Uh, 12 seasons in the majors, finished his career with a 139 and 78 record, uh, 3.20 ERA, uh, pitched in 360 games, 284 of which were starts, little over 2,000 innings, uh, 1,988 strikeouts, and a career 1.13 whip. Uh, you know, this was a guy, as I mentioned, uh, you know, was seen as, um, you know, maybe the best starter in baseball. Uh, for, you know, maybe a four-year span. His first four years as a starter, um, you know, started off as a, in the bullpen, you know, making occasional starts. But from 2004 to 2007, um, he had a 70 and 32 record, 2.89 ERA, uh, averaged over a strikeout an inning and had a 0 0.9 whip, uh, walks and hits per innings pitched. Um, you know, problem was the longevity, as I mentioned, you know, Kind of hard to see a starting pitcher with just 139 career wins. I know wins isn't seen in the same light as it was, say, uh, you know, 15, 20, 30 years ago. But, um, you know, four-time All-Star did win two AL Cy Youngs and had four other top seven finishes uh, in Cy Young voting. Won a gold glove, two-time AL ERA leader, and also led once in the NL. Um, one time led the AL in wins, three times led the AL in strikeouts, four times led the AL in whip. Um, you know, still has the only um, no-hitter in New York Mets history. Um, you know, again, though, um, that game, I don't remember the exact number of pitches he threw. Um, but to get that no-hitter, he threw quite a large amount of pitches. And, you know, just never seemed to be the same pitcher again. Uh, you know, he's made a couple, you know, attempts at comebacks in recent years, but hasn't pitched in the majors again. Um, you know, Johan Santana, um, you know, great career. Just was it long enough to get in? Um, you know, we'll have to see. Um, a guy who definitely longevity is on his side, um, that would be Omar Vizquel. Uh, Omar Vizquel, uh, 24 seasons he played in the majors. He played until he was 45 years old. Um, his 2,877 career hits are 42nd all-time. His 1,445 runs are 81st all-time. Uh, 951 RBIs, 80 home runs. 456 doubles, 404 stolen bases, 71st all-time. Uh, he has career slashes of a 272 batting average, 336 on base percentage, and 352 slugging. Uh, his 2,968 games played are 12th in MLB history. He's a three-time All-Star. Um, you know, you can tell by those offensive numbers. Yes, he had a ton of hits, 2,877, but, uh, you know, a lot of that was due to the length of his career. His offensive numbers uh, don't stand out at you. Don't stand out to you at all. Uh, you know, what would put him in contention for the Hall of Fame is, uh, you know, he was um, a wizard with the glove. Maybe that's not right the right word to use because, um, you know, maybe one of his contemporaries, Ozzie Smith, was known as the wizard, played the same position, shortstop. Vizquel won 11 gold gloves. Uh, you know, definitely was a star out in the field. Um, you know, but... As I mentioned, Ozzie Smith, uh, probably the number one guy to compare him to. Uh, Ozzie Smith is in the Hall of Fame. Um, you know, as I mentioned, Vizquel won 11 gold gloves. Smith won 13. Um, you know, if you take any, um, you know, credence in defensive war, um, Ozzie Smith's finished with a career 43.4 defensive war. Uh, Vizquel was a decent amount lower at 28.4. Um... You know, so, you know, not quite 
Ozzie Smith out in the field, um, you know, but as I mentioned, the longevity, playing till he's 45, uh, you know, a vital member of some very good teams, um, you know, maybe the second best shortstop defensively in MLB history, uh, you know, much like Damon, though, um, you know, three All-Stars in 24 seasons, and his highest finish in MVP voting was only 16th. Uh, in 1999, he finished 16th in AL MVP voting. Um, you know, so definitely a tough guy to decide. Um, let's go with the next guy. And this guy, um, you know, when he started his career, looked like a surefire Hall of Famer. Um, but, you know, didn't exactly have that momentum throughout his career. Uh, that is Andrew Jones, um, along with the Atlanta Braves, play with some other teams, include the Yankees. Um, seven team seasons in the major leagues, finished with 1,933 hits, 1,204 runs, 1,289 RBIs, 434 home runs, 385 doubles, 152 stolen bases, and career slashes of a 254 batting average, 337 on base percentage, and a 486 slugging percentage. Uh, he was a five time All Star, once won a Silver Slugger. Um, you know, as an outfielder, um, you know, was spectacular with the glove, though. Uh, won, ten, won 10 gold gloves all in consecutive seasons from 1998 to 2007. Um, you know, one of the better defensive center fielders or really defensive players, period, uh, you know, of this generation. Um, did finish second in MVP voting in 2005. Uh, only had one other top 10 finish, though. Uh, that 2005 season, he led the National League with 51 home runs and 128 RBIs. Uh, seven times had at least 30 homers. Five times had at least 100 RBIs. Four times had at least 100 runs. Um, you know, the problem was his career kind of ended with a dud uh, in his last five seasons in the majors. Uh, had 1,191 at bats and batted just 210. Um, you know, so he's a guy, as I mentioned, looked like he was a surefire Hall of Famer. Uh, you know, definitely believe he's a guy who will stay on the ballot. Whether he ever gets in, that's another question. Um, you know, it depends on how much credit uh, the voters give him for uh, his spectacular defense in center field, mostly with the Braves. Um, you know, wasn't the greatest average hitter, 254 for his career, but, you know, definitely put up good power numbers. Um, you know, a guy with an interesting case. We'll see how he does his first year on the ballot. Um, another guy, similar to Vizquel, except he was a better offensive player, maybe not quite the glove work of Vizquel. That is Scott Rowland. Uh, he didn't play shortstop like Vizquel, he was a third baseman uh, in his 17 seasons in the majors, finished with 2,077 career hits, 1,211 runs, 1,287 RBIs, 316 home runs, 517 doubles, career slashes of a 281 batting average, 364 on base percentage, and a 490 slugging percentage, um, was the 1997 National League Rookie of the Year, uh, made seven all-star teams, uh, you know, more than any of the guys I've named so far, um, eight times won the gold glove at the hot corner, um, you know, so definitely was a standout fielder at the third base position, um, but, you know, could also do it with the bat, seven times finished with at least 25 homers, five times 100 plus RBIs, two times at least 100 runs, did win a silver slugger. Only had one top 10 MVP finish during his career. Kind of surprising. Uh, was a member of the 2006 World Series champion St. Louis Cardinals. Had a productive World Series where he went 8 for 21. Um, you know, so Scott Rowland. Again, another interesting case. Um, you know, if you don't look at his numbers and someone just says his name, you probably don't think of him as a Hall of Famer, uh, you know, wasn't really like a standout personality, uh, you know, he wasn't a guy you saw all over the news, um, you know, wasn't a guy who put up eye-popping offensive numbers, but he was still very productive, very good with the glove, um, you know, do I expect him to get in? I would say, 
I do expect them to get in eventually. Definitely not first ballot. Um, but, you know, I believe he's a guy who will strengthen his case as the years go along. You know, which I don't know how you could strengthen your case, um, you know, when you're not playing still. But, uh, you know, you see it happen with all these guys. Um, you know, they seem to get more.